Schreiber here, episode 10, season number 6, and it's our career mode with West Ham United. Oh my days, thank you ever so much for the response on the last episode. It meant such a great deal to me that you really did enjoy the new player review. It was a fantastic review. Gotta say, Ryan, being a local Cole U boy, a few of you spotted that I stuck him in Cole U. I thought that was quite, quite fitting. But I've got to say, it was just a fantastic set of graphics, which was done by Mega Flummox. I really do appreciate his time and effort for doing those for me. And it just added such a different level to the actual career mode. You know, it, it was so visually beautiful. Well, I like to think so anyway. It just it just made, it just set it aside from the standard career mode. It gave us something else to really enjoy and look at. Anyway, we have got a very interesting game coming up. We're playing against QPR. We're away from home against QPR. And today's episode is going to be a bit of a methodical, passionate one. But this is a question for you to, uh, to for you guys to mull over while you're enjoying the footage in the background. And look at that table. Bolton are second. 7-1-2. and two. Everton's still undefeated. Chelsea's still undefeated. That slip-up against Everton has allowed Bolton to go above us, which is, uh, oh my days, a little bit ironic. And look at Lamella starting off the game, trying to be flashy. But you know what he's like. He does that in training. Day in, day out. Day in, day out. Day in, day out. He's just all about the techers. He is absolutely fan-freaking-tastic, and I love and adore him. Anyway, for you to mull over in the comment section below, uh, Butler, look at that. Oh, good God. Good God. That reminds me of season, probably season two, maybe some of season three, where Butlin had this, went through this stage where he just wouldn't fist the ball powerfully. He would just flap at it like a big wet tissue. He's just like a girl's wet blouse. He just flaps at it, flaps at it, flaps at it like a girl. But never fear, we have Rocker. We have Rocker, and he's making anything from about twenty yards out his own. He is unbelievable. I love and adore playing with Rocker. Absolutely sensational. But for you to mull over in the comments below. Do you like a good variation and mix within the career mode? And when I say that, look at Lamella going absolutely huge there. Some nice techers from Lamella. Oh, that would have been nice if he'd scored. But he didn't, unfortunately. Would you like to see a, a proper, vast mix across this career mode? I love doing the passionate career mode. As you know, I love putting the passion into it. I think that's what sets us completely and utterly apart as Filippo Bonaparte. You stick the ball in front of him. Nine times out of ten, from inside the half, he's going to score. And I'm not being, you know, I'm not being silly. I take shots with him from about 40, 45 yards. And I tell you what, some of them, nine times out of ten, they probably hit the bar. And the uh, the other 1%, they just literally just go over. They're never high in sky and handsome. They're literally bang on. It's unbelievable. So we can see the goal in the 33rd minute. I hope I distracted you because that was awful. Anyway, getting back to what I was talking about, would you like to see a vast mix? Now, what I'm talking about is having a passionate, methodical episode. Like, you can tell by my voice, I'm very passionate. I'm very up for it. Would you like a mix of just having a methodical, a methodical with the passionate commentary, uh, the standard passionate commentary, and a standard methodical? Yes, there's three or four choices there. If you can work out what I've just said, post it in the comments below because I was bamboozling myself, let alone anybody bloody else. And look at Filippo Bonaparte. Oh my days, he gets dragged down. That's a disgraceful tackle, tackle by Embaia. Unbelievable tackle, but it's such the skills of Filippo. He just teases. He teases. He literally just teases. He's like Hazel on Big Brother. Look at this. Oh, disgraceful tackle. Disgraceful. And rightly a penalty. And who would step up? None other than Filippo Bonaparte. Oh, my days. The keeper didn't even move. And it wasn't to do with the velocity of the ball. It was just to do with the absolute brilliance of Bonaparte. He threw him the ice. He threw him the eyes, the keeper fell for it, and he slotted the ball home. And look at Adrian going down on the left-hand side. Unfortunately, he gets tackled by Embaia. He could have cut back inside. He neglected to do so. The ball into the middle. The referee says, that's enough, lads. Let's blow the full-time whistle. And we come away with a very good 3-2 victory away from home as well, which is very important to get points away from home. But I've got to say, Butland made a couple of errors in that game. And that could be costly. We're going to have to keep an eye on Butland because we can't afford for these errors to continue and hopefully they won't continue. But as you can see, he actually made Team of the Week. If you just go back one fraction, he will see he made Team of the Week, which is quite ironic. So, Butland, 86 rated, worth 25.5 million. His statistics are disgusting. Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Kyle Walker doesn't seem to be going up whatsoever. I think he has reached his absolute peak. Callas, on the other hand, is going up. He is absolutely fantastic. I'm really enjoying Callas. He's so freaking... He's so OP. He is overpowered. He is so strong. It's ridiculous. Eduardo is unhappy. That's due to um, him feeling he's underpaid, which I find a little bit concerning. 
I do find that a little bit concerning, but never fear, never worry. 35 grand is an absolute bargain. So I'm going to happily offer him 35,000 pounds. And as you know, normally I do like to wait for the players to come to me to tell me that they're actually unhappy and they want more money. But on that occasion, it's, it's Eduardo. I play Xbox with him on a consistent basis. He usually beats me on FIFA, which, uh, yeah, it's a little bit annoying, but I'm happy to pay him his wages because, as you know, Eduardo is, is just fantastic. Our talisman has reached 88. Our talisman has reached 88. Some of you guys would have found out about this last night in uh, the, the Who's the Best Part 2 episode. But for the guys who didn't watch that, he has reached 88, which is just unbelievable. I'm so happy that he's reached 88. Look at Danny Barrera. He only came on as a substitute and he went up one rating because he's that bloody good. Rocker is doing fantastic. 82 finish, and I expect that to go up the more he plays. It's a matter of trying to work him into the games. The same with Indy. I think he's reached a peak. I'm surprised Lamella hasn't gone up, but I'm not too bothered. If his peak is 84, it's fine. The same as Gabbiadini. If his peak is 84, it's fine. On the other hand, Pogba has reached 86, which I'm very, very happy with. And I've got to say, I think his long shot is really underestimated. I think anything from 20 to 25 yards, he is really quite... I've got to use the word. I love the word so much. He really is quite biblical. He really is quite biblical. Absolutely fantastic. And look at our boy Kolka. Oh my God, I love him so much. He's going up fantastically. Let's not worry about Carlos Tevez. Busy is doing so well. Reports from Barcelona is they actually want to keep him forever. They love him. They adore him. He's a lovely lad to be around. He's a fantastic football player. He has such potential that they do want to keep him. But we will have to wait and see if any offers do come in because it will happen in the, uh, obviously, in the winter, no, the summer transfer window because he's on loan for the full season. But I will not be selling him because I think he's a fantastic player. But let's turn our concentration to a Champions Cup game. Now, this is a really big game. We haven't been doing very well in a Champions Cup. Our league form has been pretty damn impeccable. We cocked up in the Capital One Cup. We won't speak about that. The FA Cup is still to come. We are top of the division with five points alongside Atletico Madrid. You know, three games in, one win, two draws. It's just not acceptable. We've really got to express ourselves, take some more risks. As Destro with a roulette pulls the ball back, but a great defensive header. That would have been a lovely goal. And it's nice to see Destro starting to loosen up. He's been scoring plenty of goals, but he's been so clinical and so surgical-like that it's nice to see him see him chill a little bit and try something different. Try a skill move. It's so nice to see him do that. Eduardo linking up with Filippo Bonaparte. And look at the way, where Eduardo was on that screen. He's just playing such a perfect role. And what a finish by Bassi. Absolutely scripted finish by Bassi. It was fantastic. You just have to shoot. It hits 45 minutes. Just pull the trigger. Not even a really hard shot. And it goes in near post, which is fantastic. Absolute fantastic start. Going into halftime, hopefully with the 1-0 lead. But the one thing you can't do is ever, ever underestimate your opponents. Because on World Class, even on Legendary, they will come back and bite you on the hearse really, 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 really hard. And that was a wonderful switch of play there. That ball was switched to play was absolutely fantastic. It was beautiful. But we did go in at halftime. Leading. Now, I keep getting this wrong. It's Legia Warsaw, isn't it? It's Legia Warsaw. Okay, in my mind, it's Legia Warsaw. It's done, Okay. It's done. It's Legia Warsaw. I do apologise if you were a fan of Legia Warsaw. If you play for Legia Warsaw or you are Legia Warsaw, I do apologise. My pronunciation is diabolical. But you have to love me. You just have to love me. As we make a substitution, and we're not going to be taking any risks because we're sort of controlling the game. And I felt at this moment in time, within this game, it made sense to bring Rocker on. Let Filippo have a rest. Bring Gabbiadini on and let Destro have a rest because they have been playing a lot of football of late. And we do sometimes put a lot of pressure on Filippo Bonaparte to consistently, you know, to consistently perform and play as Callas misses what I would have called a simple header. He should have been scoring that. He should have been nodding that away quite easily. He failed to do so. And that could be costly as we continue on. Leisure Walsall with a fantastic opportunity. But they just put it wide, which was uh, for us. One of those moments when your heart goes, oh, oh, the beat skips. One of those dodgy moments until Butland makes a dramatic error. That's the second error, I would say. Maybe the third or fourth error in this episode he has made. And it not this, not you know, the first time it probably didn't cost us a goal. But this time he has cost us a goal in the 87th minute against a run of play. You know, we've given him an absolute lifeline. We've given them. An absolutely godly lifeline. You know, they're going to be sitting there or their fans are going to be sitting there laughing at us because 
We've dominated them and we've just given the game away. But saying that, Bassi moving forward, he gets caught out. Sloppy play, should have knocked it inside to Rocker. Neglected to do so. Fantastic ball from back to front by Ligia Walsall. Do apologise if I've got that wrong. They break down the left-hand side, get the ball in. Controls and finishes. Unbelievable. And it all stemmed from the mistake Butland made. It all stemmed from the mistake Butland made. Cruising, no problems within the game, leading 1-0 to make such a dramatic error is so, so costly. So costly. But Eduardo knocking the ball into Gabbiadini. Gabbiadini trying to get onto his right foot. He couldn't work it onto his left foot. Puts it back onto his left foot. Pulls the trigger. And it just goes wide. Just go. Well, it was at least a foot and a half. But it just goes wide. So literally with four minutes to go, we were dominating. We were in pole position. And then it's just grabbed and ripped away from us. And the only man who can take it on his shoulders, it's got to be Butland. It's a great shame. But he's got to take it on his shoulders. Anyway, let's have a look at the Daily Jaffa. Anyway, it's now time for the Jaffa Sport. So, top left-hand corner, we start off with Chumps Cup. The late slip-up by the Hammers last night has led to some supporters losing faith in the selections by lock. Though fans are happy with the BPL form, they, they really want to win the Champions Cup this year. Messi wanted Hammers deal. Messi shocked Barca fans by admitting he wanted to move to England and play for West Ham. As they play with such passion and determination, Locke would not be drawn into a comment. Further details to follow in the next episode. Butland could be moved on. Barrera could become the new number one after Butland errors. Not long ago, Butland signed a £100,000 a week contract to see him stay at West Ham United for four years. But ever since he has put pen to paper, his form has not been the same. Hammers fans have called called for Locke to show greater faith in Danny Barrera, who has impressed in the B-team ranks and looks to be the firm favourite to take the number one jersey in the coming seasons. The question is, will Locke keep faith in Butland? Post your thoughts below. And on that bombshell, I will catch you in the next episode. Cheers, guys. Yes, it was more like a night.